Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Japanova Albrechtson, and I am the co founder and CEO of Trackbot Scientific, where we're contributing to the development of safe and effective pharmaceuticals at increased speed and quality. Drug development consists of many stages. However, the preclinical phase and animal testing is an absolutely crucial part for new medicines and therapies to even reach the clinical stage. Experts say that this will continue this way for 25 to 30 years, as there's no other um, solutions that can systemically mimic a reaction to a therapy. However, we rely on very outdated ways of supervising and looking into how the animal's well-being and welfare is looking like. Today, researchers spend around 20 or 10 to 20 percent extra animals on each study, not only to keep tight-knit groups, but also to foresee if animals die during the way or uh, exhibit adverse effects that were not accounted for. In addition, preclinical researchers spend 20% of their working days on manual weighing and manual supervision of animals. And despite these efforts, we still see unforeseen outliers occurring. There's a lot of hours during the day where the animals go unseen and can exhibit the actual pathophysiological effects that you don't see when you're present. That can set the whole drug developmental chain back with weeks, months, or years. Current solutions out on the market, mainly the technological solutions, lack in functionality, as they require you to restructure your workflow, taking the animals out of their home environment and placing them into something else. They're very feature heavy, and they measure a whole lot of things that the researcher is not really interested in for a daily basis. Those can only be used for specific studies. We want to propose a new way to monitor the animals 24-7. This is the future of animal monitoring, where we're driving the digitalization of preclinical studies through an in-home cage monitoring system. The way it works is you place your track solution inside the cage, you put your animals on top, and what it does is it weighs the animals individually and uses deep tech or AI to monitor the activity and coupling these to different behavior patterns they would see in different disease models. It can be used as an alarm system to notify you and give you a quick call to action of what is happening inside the cage, or it can be used for continuous monitoring, and it's a plug-and-play solution as we operate within the cage. Some examples of the output that we can get are, of course, weight trends over time, and also if there's any abnormal activity occurring in the cage that reaches a certain threshold. That's why we're coming to the market with a solution that can reduce the number of animals used as you now harbor more control of what happens in the cage. We limit the manual intervention and we secure the data quality, as oftenly animals mask their actual adverse effects in human presence. Of course, we increase animal welfare, and we do this in line with the three R. According to the largest breeder in the world, Trackpaw is estimated to be a need-to-have product in about 50% of all cases where they use animals. And we can divide it further into different disease models that are very popular. The largest chunk being cancer, followed by neurology, of course, and biomarkers and metabolism studies. But the preclinical pre segment usually consists of three phases, or it, it can consist of these three parts. Basic research, which accounts for clinical observations, different behaviors that are more linked to uh, biological occurrences. We have applied research or disease-specific, more typical for certain disease models, and then preclinical GLP accounting for regulatory tox studies. Keeping these colors in mind, we plan to cover mostly of the basic research during our first year of launch, which will be in 2026, 
because we're data driven and need to combine data in order to train our algorithms, we'll start dwelling into the disease-specific market in 2027, offering CNS typical uh, behavior patterns that we can analyze, uh, diabetes typical behaviors and so on, before we reach and become GLP certified in 2031, also covering the tox market. If we put this into numbers, in our most prominent uh, markets in the EU and US, they use accordingly or around 3.3 million cages per year. So that's the market opportunity. And if we so cover 50,000 of these with our track solution, that will lead a serviceable addressable market of 1 billion sec per year. We aim at reaching a net revenue of 160 million in 2029. Looking at the projection a little bit, we're launching a beta version next year that's going to be tested by selected global pharma companies and breeders. We will then launch sharply in 2026 before reaching a break-even 2027. The key milestones we've reached this year, among many, we've applied for a patent that is extremely broad for both the hardware components and for the actual application of an in home cage monitoring system. We've raised a little short of 7 million sec, and we have pilot studies and LOIs signed with some of the most prominent pharma companies in the world. We're raising 6.5 million sec, for which 5.1 is already signed for, for a pre-money valuation of 15 million sec. This will increase or prolong our runway until uh, September of 2024. And our plan is to utilize this capital in order to develop the product so that we can launch the beta version. And we do so very close together with the commercial market. They tell us what the requirements are, we build the product. In that sense, we want to continue to nurture our commercial market and our um, customer interactions. And of course, we've seen indications on how to even further expand our IP portfolio, which we wish to do in the upcoming year. The team that will drive this to success is a compilation of uh, researchers that worked with animals and faced this frustration for firsthand, and also of brilliant engineers, both on the hardware side, but also on the machine learning side. We are all backed up by a senior board of directors or executives with long experience in the pharma industry. We have a previous global director of all preclinical studies from AstraZeneca with us. We have seniors from Pharmacia and Novartis with us, and also global distribution experts and business developers. So why should you invest in us? Well. Not only do we have LOIs and global customers on the line ready to test the product, we've seen that there's been a paradigm shift where the first ever pharmaceutical declaration has been signed by major players like Merck, Sanofi, Novartis, Novo Nordisk, all allocating resources and time to find better and more sustainable ways of performing animal research. Because they, just as us, realize how crucial animal testing is, but we want to do something about it. And I hope you're with us during that trip. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, and thank you for step stepping in on uh, such short notice. Of course. It's great. Mm. Um, well, let's see, uh, what questions do we have here? Uh, let's start with this one. What are the main reasons for customers to buy into this? Is it more of like cost savings or increased uh, quality for studies, or maybe a bit of both? Definitely a bit of both. So scientists, we've noticed, are frustrated and share this frustration with us that they spend so much efforts on monitoring the animals, but that never being enough, still they're facing outliers. So uh, basically a paradigm shift where we're getting fed up with the analog and manual ways of how we monitor animals. Yeah. So definitely a time saving and increasing of the quality of studies mm -hmm. we see. And um, has the product been tested in a live setting? Um, and if so, what did you see? Yeah, it has. In selected labs here in Lund, 
it has been. And in a week, we will launch our first pilot testing with one of the largest pharma companies in the world. So we're super excited for that. Uh, so what we've seen from, from those types of studies is we get reproducible data from the weight sensors. So there's a matrix of weight sensors in the platform. And we're now developing it to be compatible with different chip systems that you use. Uh, we've also seen very clear data on, for instance, aggression between mice. And that's one large market as well, where you want to have an alarm system for when that happens so you can separate the colony. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you, obviously, you obviously mentioned the benefits within uh, drug development uh, for this technology. How about in academia? I assume there's a, a potential there as well. Absolutely. At the academia, we see more of a partnering, partnering unit. Uh, very important for us in order to get out publications and spreading the world word for, through that way. Uh, of course, that's super important. But we aim for the pharmaceutical and zero market firsthand. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mentioned uh, uh, a partnership uh, with a big pharma. Yes. Uh, what is your partnering strategy? What is your partnering strategy? So it's built on built on trust and built on sharing the same frustration and coming from that root. So I find that very beneficial that I myself have been facing the same sort of needs that they have, so I can profoundly understand what their needs are. Uh, so the partnering strategy is a lot of information dripping as well. Mm. We've seen that if we spoke to one partner, another one recognizes us and wants to speak about it. Mm. So that and a little bit of luck. Of course, <laughs> luck is always uh, beneficial there. Right. Well, it's good that you already have so much interest uh, from that side as especially. Um, let's see. Uh, you gave a number of 50,000 SEC, I'm assuming here, translating to 1 billion SEC. Is that your best market penetration estimate? When will you hit this mark? It isn't. So there's a lot of shadowing in these numbers, especially when you look at the states. Uh, there is no real sort of document that you can read on how many animals are actually used. Here in EU, we're very, very strict with documenting exactly. So we expect that the market size is much larger. We're still figuring it out how much Mm -hmm. But estimates say that around 10 to 100 million animals, or mice specifically, are used in the States. That's mm -hmm. a huge gap that we're trying to close. Yeah. Um, let's see. No more questions here on the app. Any, any questions here uh, from the audience? Any live questions? So, so many shy people. <laughs> yeah. um, well, maybe I can ask you another question sure. here. Um, um, you, uh, you talked about having raised money already, but what is your strategy for raising money, especially looking forward? So our strategy is to look locally. We have mainly attracted investors from the Arisund area, uh, and we plan on continuing to do that. And we want to have an investor in with financial muscles to follow us in the upcoming round. Our next round will be at around 9 million sec. So we already have one partner that can follow us up on that, but having another one would be just exquisite. Uh, so that's our strategy, is to find someone with financial muscles and also the drive for what we do. Uh, Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have, but thank you so much for answering the questions and Thank your you very presentation. Much. Thank you for listening. Thank you.